Anxiety and fear are two terms that are sometimes used interchangeably and yet there is a definitive difference between the two. Fear is a response to a direct known threat, something that is happening in your external environment, whereas anxiety is a response to a possibility, to an imagined threat. Now, unfortunately, our mind doesn't differentiate between real and imagined threats, and it produces the same physiological response, which is our fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And whether the actual threat is real or imagined, the response is very real, and it can feel quite distressing and uncomfortable when we don't know how to tolerate it. The fight, flight, freeze or fawn response is the body's response to perceived or real stress or threat. And it basically involves the release of certain neurotransmitters and hormones, namely adrenaline and cortisol into the bloodstream. And ways that we may experience this include shallow breathing, feeling like as if our heart rate is elevated, feeling like as if our thoughts are racing, or being unable to concentrate, being unable to focus, being unable to make any conscious decisions that make sense not feeling like you're in a very rational place because your prefrontal cortex is kind of switched off and you're very much in your amygdala so it's a very emotional response you may feel very warm you may feel like as if you're sweating you may feel like as if you have an upset tummy you may feel a little bit trembly like as if your hands are shaking highly agitated and you may just find it difficult to to sit, difficult to be in your own body. You may also experience some chest pain. And again, like any response, I mean, it is different in everybody. So it's about recognizing what it brings up in you so that you can understand when you're in that mode. Anxiety is highly subjective. People experience different anxieties at varying degrees. Some people experience a generalized anxiety. Some people have very specific phobias. Now the thing with anxiety is it has an addictive quality to it because we assume that by engaging in a thought we are actually exerting some level of control over the possible outcome. However all we're actually doing is forcing ourselves through the emotional experience, the pain that we are actually trying to avoid. So what can we do to alleviate our anxiety? Well, first we need to understand that from an existential perspective, a certain amount of anxiety is inevitable. It's part and parcel of the human condition. So we're never going to vanquish it completely. We need to learn to tolerate it. We need to be, learn to coexist with our anxiety and to be able to decipher the message that it has for us. Because anxiety is generally an indicator that we care a lot about what it is that we are feeling anxious about recognizing your thinking patterns, recognizing your emotional responses, recognizing your beliefs about the world that may be a little bit unhelpful and recognizing your insecurities and your fears is really important in being able to decipher what's helpful and what is not. And an important aspect of that is developing some sort of contemplative practice so that you're able to become an observer of your thoughts and of your emotional responses and of your triggers and this can also be done with the assistance of a psychotherapist or a counsellor who will help you get to know yourself a little bit better. I mean the more self-aware we are the better off we're going to be. The more we're going to be able to separate what is real uh, with what is imagined. Now, I use the word imagine there, and that's not trying to be condescending, but it is so important when we are dealing with anxiety that we differentiate between what is a possibility, even if it's a strong possibility, and what is actually happening in the here and now. I mean, we need to bring ourselves back into our bodies. We need to bring ourselves back into the present so we can make wise decisions and possibly take whatever appropriate action we can take that is preventative whereas if we're caught up 
in a state of anxiety, our rational brain is switched off completely and we're not really making the wisest choices. We're instead hyperventilating, feeling very distressed and not actually having any control on any outcome. And it's really important to look at your relationship with control and with certainty. I mean, so much of our anxieties are exacerbated by our conviction that we have control over a far wider scope than we do in reality. I mean, all we can really work on is our own internal experience and our consequential actions. Whereas we assume we can control circumstances. We assume that we can control other people. And in trying to do so, we cause ourselves more anxiety. We become more panicked. Learning how to sit with what feels like intolerable body processes is so important. Anxiety doesn't feel anyways pleasant. In fact, it can be extremely distressing. However, once the fight, flight, freeze or fawn response has been initiated, it has to run its course. You know, we cannot pull it back. We can't switch it off. And the more we understand this, the better, because it will dissipate after about eight minutes if we just sit with it. However, when we resist our anxiety, when we fight against it, when we try to run from it or when we try to numb out, when we try to avoid it as opposed to exploring it and seeing it for what it is, then it is more likely to continue. It is more likely to become overwhelming and can sometimes move us into a place of pure and utter panic and this is how panic attacks occur. So it's recognizing that you have to sit with that distress for a certain amount of time. It's a relatively short amount of time. However, it can feel huge. There are things that you can do though that can alleviate the symptoms in the here and now. Although some people recommend meditation as a way of alleviating your anxiety, I feel that unless you have a well-established practice, it can be pretty hard to implement when you're in the height of it. So what instead I focus on is trying to implement your contemplative or meditative practice outside of your anxiety attacks. So this is a tool, but it's not a tool that you can put into action when you are really struggling to sit in your own skin. What you can do instead is try to ground yourself. And this is about bringing yourself back into the present moment. You also need to get your breathing under control. So straw breathing is fantastic. It's basically inhaling through the nose for a count of four, holding the breath in the lower belly. So you've brought the air right down into the lower belly. So the breathing is quite deep and hold it there for a count of six and then exhaling out through the mouth for a count of six, taking a pause then before repeating and just doing this for several minutes until you feel the body come down a couple of notches. Also, grounding exercises using the senses involve naming what it is that you can see, what your clothes feel like against your body, what the ground feels like against your feet or the chair feels like if you're sitting down, what you can hear, what you can smell or even what you can taste. And again, just reacquainting yourself with the physical present as opposed to being up in the head. Uh, doing any sort of vigorous movement can be beneficial. So dancing around your kitchen, even though it's the last thing that you may feel like doing, going for a very brisk walk or shaking your limbs vigorously because basically you're looking to release some of the emotional energy that is coursing through your veins. A body scan can be really beneficial and this is basically just checking in with the body to see if you can detect areas of tension or tightness and generally you'll find if you work your way up that once you get to the lower back or the tummy or the shoulders or the jaw that you might be able to identify some tightness and tension and just compassionately releasing that and again all of this work needs to be done compassionately I mean nobody goes out looking for anxiety generally it is the consequence of some sort of negative past experience it doesn't do, doesn't just materialize out of the air so treating yourself with kindness and understanding and tolerance is so important 
important. Movement can be so helpful in releasing the emotional energy that is trapped in the body. And this can include dancing around your kitchen, even if you don't feel like doing it, going for a very brisk walk, particularly in some sort of naturalistic setting, or just shaking your limbs out as vigorously as possible. Improving your relationship with your emotions is so important. Being able to tolerate intense emotions, to decipher what it is that they're telling you, to be able to self-soothe and to regulate in a healthy way. Also being able to reappraise some of your thinking patterns and beliefs. Writing things down can be so helpful here because it brings us back into a more rational mindset. And when we write things down, when we write down our biggest anxiety we need to be able to engage with that thought so we can ask ourselves questions like okay do I know this to be true and how is believing that this is true benefiting me in any way does it make me a better person a better partner a better employee a better parent would it be kinder and more beneficial for me to have an alternative belief and is it possible that I can completely flip this thought around and believe believe the opposite and this may be difficult at first but once you get into the swing of it it's amazing how many of our anxieties are not actually realities and are just thoughts that are causing us unnecessary distress and pain. It's also improving our relationship with uncertainty and control. Again this assumption that we can control so much is really causing us so many issues and the more we bring the focus back on on to being a decent person for ourselves and a decent person for others. I mean, one of the greatest ways that we can get out of our own heads is to think about other people's experience, to consider how we kind of be of benefit or of service to others. And again, as I said, all of this work needs to be done with such kindness and understanding. I mean, anxiety is so debilitating. It can really take over somebody's life, but it is something that you can work on and improve with the right, I suppose, information and the right attitude. I mean, it can be very easy to stay attached to our anxiety because, as I said earlier, it feels addictive. It feels like as if we are preventing a potential outcome. Well, however, all we are doing is creating a prison in our own minds and nobody deserves that. If you would like to work with me, get in touch with me on the website. It's fundamentals.ie.